Hi everyone, I'm Tracy Matisak along with Judy Giesberg. Judy is our special guest for the Humanities on the Road taping of Lincoln and the Widow Bixby. The Widow Bixby was an ordinary person by anyone's standards, but she received what could be argued to be the most famous condolence letter in all of history from President Lincoln. That's what Judy is going to be talking with us about for the program. And Judy, start off just by telling us how you got interested in the lives of ordinary people during the Civil War period. Well, this was such an extraordinary time, and it really um, sort of reached so far into um, the home front, um, requiring you know people to support the war and uh, women sending their husbands off to fight in the war. And I was always interested how an ordinary average person, um, woman with children to support, how would she manage um, when her husband left? Uh, she hoped that he would bring her he'd send money home to her, but uh, while she was waiting for that money to arrive, or if it didn't arrive, what would she do? When we think of the Widow Bixby, the way that many people would know that name is if they saw the movie Saving Private Ryan. There was some mention there that might help people understand who we're talking about. Yes, at the beginning of that movie, um, you uh, are looking at a scene of uh, typewriters where um, women um, are typing out letters sent by army commanders back to loved ones who've um, lost a son or husband or father uh, in the war. And, and then, of course, you were then introduced to this one woman who's received three of those that day. Um, and it's um, your introduction to Mrs. Uh, Margaret Ryan, um, who receives uh, a letter from the Army telling her about the loss of her three sons. Um, and, uh, and in the process, right, you're, um, the Army's trying to decide what to do. She know, they know they have, she has another son out on the battlefield. Um, and then trying to think of what to do, uh, George Marshall, General George Marshall, uh, takes Lincoln's letter out of his drawer and he reads it and he tries to take some wisdom from Abraham Lincoln, um, you know, a war in the 19th century to figure out really how you handle or how you help families deal with the loss. And that was that very letter to the widow Bixby. It was. Yeah. It's one thing, Judy, to research Abraham Lincoln or Stonewall Jackson or some famous historic figure. It's another thing entirely, I would think, to research ordinary people. I mean, how do you go about identifying these people and finding out so much about their lives? Well, it's finding a lot of needles and a lot of haystacks, right? Uh, like starting with Lydia Bixby. The only really hard piece of evidence we have about her is that letter that Lincoln sent to her. And um, from that letter, right, you, you um, ask yourself a lot of questions. Who was she? And, and what would it take for a woman to send five of her sons, her only support, really, uh, into the army? Um, and then you start asking those kinds of questions. You then go to the census and try to find out who, who, you know, where she might have lived and how she might have supported herself. Uh, we know that the letter um, was, somebody investigated the letter, they did some research on the letter, so you try to do that research yourself, see if you can find out where her sons died. Um, so you have to follow, I guess like reporters do, right? You follow every lead that you can um, as far as you can follow it, and then you um, are creative and you try another approach. You've done some research as well on the experience of African American women during the Civil War. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, we are really fortunate uh, where we live um, here in the Philadelphia area and, and in Pennsylvania in particular because there's a large black population in uh, Philadelphia uh, during the Civil War. So we know there um, are sources out there that can tell us how uh, women of color and men of color really um, um, experience the war. Um, for st historians who are interested in men, um, they usually follow these men as they join the army, um, right? Because by 1863, men of color could uh, join the United States colored troops. And so once they become soldiers, there's a paper trail. Um, but we don't have as much from uh, the home front back to them. So it's harder to find women of color, but they're there. And in fact, what I found is um, when their husbands enlisted, um, they, um, also took up war work, um, went to um, bring supplies to them and food to them when they were injured or ill in area hospitals. And in the process, they launched a civil rights campaign. Um, they started integrating streetcars, which was their main form of transportation. Um, so I actually found um, in Philadelphia um, great resources for studying the lives of women of color in particular because they organized themselves into this movement and they took streetcar companies to court. 
Um, they sued for the right to ride the cars. Um, so um, uh, they, you know, it, when it first seemed to be, you know, a problem, how am I going to find these women? Or, you know, where are they going to show up in the historical record? In fact, turned out uh, to be an opportunity to tell a story about um, women of color here in Philadelphia that hasn't been told. The title of Judy's book is Army at Home, Women in the Civil War on the Northern Home Front. We look forward to that. We certainly hope you can join us for Humanities on the Road for Lincoln and the Widow Bixby. What an interesting history. We're looking forward to hearing more from Judy. I'm Tracy Matisak. See you next time.